SpongeBob SquarePants, released in 2003. This is a joystick that plugged directly into your TV that had a built-in game. No console required, just plug it in and play. It's shaped like SpongeBob's head with uh, his nose as the joystick stick. It's surprisingly very comfortable to use and very responsive. This one contains five different SpongeBob themed games to play, all with fully detailed instructions. The games aren't too complex, so you could probably skip the instructions if you want to. The first game is SpongeBob's Bubble Pop. This plays very similar to a classic breakout style game with SpongeBob bouncing a ball off his head. You slowly break down the bubble blockade and then break the barrier at the top of the screen to proceed to the next level. Several power-ups appear such as multi-balls, sticking the ball to your head, a spatula launcher, and one that makes him look like my uncle. <laughs> now I'm not into uh, breakout style games very much, this one really doesn't add anything new either. But like most breakout games, it is challenging and probably be satisfactory to fans of the genre. Next is Sandy's Surf Adventure, which is a shmup. And yeah, I'm off to a pretty good start here. Not very big on these uh, styles of games either, but uh, I was a big fan of Thunder Force 2 though. But back then you did kind of have to play the games your parents bought you, because you didn't have any others to play, so I don't know, maybe that's why I liked it. This one is also fairly basic. The power-ups are pretty standard, along with uh, traditional enemy movement. In this one though, the joystick didn't feel quite as responsive as I would have liked. And while shooting, the on-screen bullets didn't seem to be keeping up with how fast I was pressing the button. Along with that, death uh, sends you back to a checkpoint, which is kind of annoying. And power-ups just weren't showing up enough, uh, just making the game really uninteresting. I wasn't having a good time at all, I really didn't get anywhere in this game, and I didn't care much to keep trying, I was bored. So yeah, I really didn't like this one. Invasion of the Hooks has Spongebob throwing a Krabby Patty at hooks that are trying to steal your friends. Not sure how burgers actually do that, but whatever. Now you can see the lures on the hooks have different colors. Each color has its own hit points. The yellow ones need two hits, and the brown ones take three hits, for example. And it can actually uh, get quite hectic if you don't time things right. At first I thought you had to lose all three characters for the game to be over, but if you lose just one character, that's it, it's done. Which makes sense, I guess. Be kind of weird if you just stood there in one spot constantly shooting at one hook. But Invasion of the Hooks is very simple, and it's kind of fun. It's an alright little game. Next is Patrick in the Maze, and from the title you can imagine what this might be about. You navigate Patrick through a maze. This one gives you a lot of lives, and for good reason. There's very few enemy types, but they are effective at what they do. Patrick moves relatively quick, and these wall-following spike guys just might suddenly appear on the screen if you're not focused. Smaller jellyfish opponents appear instantly and often close by. You can catch one using your net and use it as a projectile against other jellyfish. It's pretty much your only weapon, so it's kind of a risk-reward thing trying to grab one. Various areas of the maze are cut off by electric walls. To get through these, you'll have to find various SpongeBob cast members and play these seashell minigames. A Simon Says style game, grab a certain amount of pearls in a certain amount of time, or maybe keep the pearl bouncing in the air for a certain amount of time. You have to play each of the cast members game at least twice. It gets harder each time, and surprisingly some of these are fairly decent and enjoyable reflex games. The maze itself, although it's small, is not too easy either. You have to backtrack quite a bit, so sometimes you can get confused about where you were and where you are. But it's a pretty cool maze game. Uh, I did like this. Really good job here. Finally, it's the Super Chum Bucket. A one-screen platformer that kind of has a Donkey Kongish feel to it. Your goal is to get to the top of the screen and touch Plankton, which he will rocket off to the next level when you get close. The levels have various hazards and moving platforms, which results in you having to figure out the patterns and timing. The variation of layouts per level were actually quite impressive with the little amount of objects they had to work with. And the joystick felt really great here, uh, SpongeBob's response was very precise to the joystick input. Very important in this style of game. It's curious the uh, controls were so poor on that shmup game and not this one. But yeah, this is another well done game, it's pretty good. So overall, this is actually a really great plug and play game. Most of the games are decent, joystick feels good, and graphics are on par for your average plug and play visual experience. One thing very noticeable though is it didn't have any music for the levels while playing. Now I suppose you can remedy this by using your own Insert favorite music artist here. Insert current preferred music listening method here. While you play this to uh, add your own music I suppose. But still a little odd, I figured there'd be some theme songs or something. Now were these games good enough to make me play multiple times? Uh, not really. But that's just me, I do have a lot of games so I don't replay too many. 
But some of these games are fun, and I can't actually see people replaying some of them. It's not a bad collection at all with some good design games. For the most part, I did have fun with them, and coming out of a plug-and-play experience and saying I was able to enjoy it, well, that's a good thing. So there you have it, SpongeBob SquarePants Plug-and-Play. Thanks for watching. Thank you.